the Honda XL750 Transalp is not what you think it is. Hi, my name is Evan. Welcome to I'm a Biker and let's get into the details. So when you name something the Transalp, the expectations are naturally going to be high. Let's get into the details and let's break it down into separate parts, engine and performance, handling, and then in the end, let's put it all together and finally uh, really bring a good view on what the Transalp is all about. So let's start with the engine. It's a 755cc uh, parallel twin with a 270 degree firing order. And what that means is that it sounds absolutely great. The moment you start that engine, you absolutely fall in love with that sound. And uh, every time you're revving, and especially when you're taking off, it sounds really, really good. And when you're in the highway, when you're cruising that wave of torque, you know, maybe around that four to 6,000 RPM when you just uh, just you know, by pumping the throttle, it sounds absolutely brilliant inside your helmet and uh, it's something you'll get addicted to and you'll be doing crazy high number of speeds by the time you know when you're touching 5-6 thousand rpm in uh, 6 gear. Out on the highway in 6 gear, you are at 100 just below 4 thousand rpm, that's, that's a really relaxed engine speed and when you really want to gun it, it, it easily pulls to you know close to 190-200, uh, although we wouldn't recommend sitting there, I think the sweet spot is between that uh, 120 to 160 and uh, that's where the bike feels really planted and it's got enough juice for that overtake and uh, it feels really confident at those speeds. When it comes to refinement, it's a typical Honda. Uh, it's refined all through the rev range. There are some revs that get a little bit annoying but uh, nothing that will bother you in the long run, especially when you're out touring and doing the big numbers. But yeah, it overall a very refined machine and something that you can easily cruise on the highways and you know do a lot of, uh, lot of kilometers on. I'm not going to say miles. <laughs> Probably the one place I wish things were a little bit more, uh, you know, more better is that the bottom end torque, uh, the 270 degree firing order, you know, you know, you have compromised a little bit of the bottom end torque for the, you know, beautiful sound. So yes, in in the first gear is especially short, short to compensate for that bottom end torque. So you quickly run out of a juice. I know you, you uh, in fact, you accelerate too fast. So it's actually a, a very friendly. A wheelie machine and all those riding modes come into play but yeah that is probably the only place especially when you're off-road and when you want to uh, gun out of some place you quickly need to shift into second and and then even then keep the revs up to you know to, and keep the momentum going and you just can't really uh, you know go on a, a uphill climb with you know the two you know three four thousand rpm and you, know, you need to keep working that gearbox. So to make your life uh, easy in different conditions, different climatic conditions, different terrain, there are five riding modes. There is sport, there's standard, there's gravel, the rain, and then the fifth one is a user customizable one. So in the user control mode, you have, you know, you can individually adjust each of these levels, the engine braking, the power, the traction control, and you can switch off the ABS, the rear ABS basically. In all the other modes, there are preset values that come with the modes. Like for example, you have full power in sport mode, and then you have maximum intervention from the traction control, you know, when you are in gravel and rain etc. It has a good safety net to keep you uh, safe in different conditions and definitely welcome especially in the first gear being a little bit short and uh, when you are in tricky conditions you, know, you tend to easily spin out the rear or you know pop a wheelie. So when it comes to actual uh, mileage kilometers to the litter well if you go by the dashboard that's shown depending that's shown uh, depending on your you know your how happy your throttle hand is it shows numbers all the way from 15 16 to 3031. 30, so if you're taking it easy, it shows 3031. 30, but yeah, on an average, I think if you ride it sane, you get anything about 2025. 20, if you're really gunning it off-road and you know in general always gunning it, you're going to get about 18, 19 uh, to the litter. So let's talk about handling and ergonomics. First of all, you have a very comfortable riding position. The seat height, even though it's at 855, it is comfortable because you know, the front is narrow and is easy to get in and out. And once you're placed on it, I mean, when you're sitting on it, you feel comfortable and you don't feel like it's going to be a little bit tricky and you know too high up. That said, when you're riding it, you feel that really commanding riding position. You're really tall and you can see uh, clearly and you actually can see when bikes, the normal commuter bikes go past you, then that is when you really 
really feel the difference that you know you're sitting quite tall and you, know, you can actually see over them and gives you good vision on the road yes that is also i mean on off road as well it you know it really is helpful yes you have to typical you know adventure um, design bike you have to look your eyes way forward because right in front of you it's not going to be the best vision but yeah you have to look maybe then 30 50 meters ahead of you always especially off road uh, on the road yeah always uh, in control and you feel comfortable so now coming to the actual handling it is a typical big bike it is top heavy and combine that with the gearing sometimes you get caught and especially you want that torque to get out of situations that's where there's some getting used to it on the road the ergonomics i mean the behavior is really good in terms of a street riding in terms of highway riding it's a beautiful bike it can handle some corners as well of course the 21 inch front is a little bit lazy turning into a corner but yes you get used to it and uh, if you're carrying even a little bit of speed maybe anything above you know 20 30 kilometers per hour uh, this one handles the curves and everything quite beautifully coming to its behavior off the road well that's where probably the design of the bike will slightly fool you because it's not an out and out adventure bike it is an adventure looking bike and and i mean that in not in a bad way it can handle off road it can handle the trails it can handle some bad roads but you can't really push it like how you would uh, push a proper adventure bike this is more of a 50 50 bike in terms of you know it has got good road performance it's got good off road performance probably not great adventure performance so uh, how is it using it as your daily bike uh, like if you get stuck in city traffic etc well actually not so bad only probably tricky places you'd be a little bit careful or get used to when you're or a bit tricky to watch out for when you're new on the bike is there while taking uh, some tight u turns but apart from that it's quite nimble in the city and uh, since you have a really commanding riding position and uh, good vision you can actually ride it you know poke it in everywhere quite easily there's no issue there there is some heat thrown at you but it's actually quite well managed the moment you get mo moving it's it's all blown away from you and that's not a big issue so if you're planning to tour a lot uh, with a pillion definitely possible especially on the road no issues probably off road it's a bit tricky because i told you again bottom and top it's a bit short first gear as well but yeah mostly uh, on road no problem and you don't really feel the pillion weight as well so it has got enough grunt and power of course it's a big bike to take you with a pillion as well and uh, definitely with uh, panniers etc added it should be absolutely fine so one thing that uh, uh, that also that needs to be mentioned is the ground clearance actually quite adequate if you consider it as a road bike but yeah the moment you take it off road probably you need to watch out it's not bad in any way but yeah if you're fully loaded like if you have a pannier pillion etc and if you're cutting across some tricky terrain yeah you need to watch out for the ground clearance but yeah most of the time it's almost uh, it's pretty much fine and uh, something to watch out for in case you are thinking of doing some you know big adventure stunts on this bike but yeah uh, definitely uh, welcome to add a bash plate as well so now coming to the tires well uh, 21 inch tires at the front uh, 18 inch tires at the back does the job of handling bad roads uh, very very well and uh, spoke wheels it is a tube tire so that's a miss probably especially at this price point but yeah it handles all the bad roads and the undulations on even on our well designed roads <laughs> very well all in all very good there front is really soft probably the rear is not uh, as soft as as complementing the front and it, it will remind you every once in a while that you know it's stiff and uh, you need to watch out for it coming to the headlight typically it's better than the normal led lights that you see nowadays it has got a good range and throw but yeah definitely if you're planning serious touring i would recommend ox lights to you know get a bit wider range in front of you and coming to the build quality yeah it is definitely well made i don't see anything that i really want to complain about and uh, it's surprisingly well made even after pushing it off road uh, which we did and pushing it on road with some really not so great roads as well no rattles no unnecessary sounds and everything sounds really good so then who is this bike for well this bike is uh, tailor made for the you know the long range tourer i mean if you want something that is no nonsense that can munch the miles that can handle the surprise bad roads it's and that's been thrown at you and you know you want to just keep on going without worrying too much about the bike and just worrying more about and enjoying the scenery around I think that's what this bike is all about. It is not for the the crazy adventure seeker. It's not for the uh, you know who want to do you know all sorts of 
uh, jumps and you know crazy off road stuff no but this is for the serious tourer who wants to run some miles who want to get who wants to get to places uh, who wants to carry a lug, you know a luggage and everything without losing out on power and the ride experience altogether well that's the axel sam 50 transal for you and it will do that all day every day without any problem So guys that's the Excel 750 Transalp for you if you have any questions do let me know in a comment below uh check out our Instagram we got more updates coming there than on YouTube thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one